This is my fiddle leaf fig and it used to be absolutely beautiful. I had leaves that were covering every single inch of the branches and the leaves were lush, dark, and green. Recently, we did some renovations in our house and because of those renovations and because those renovations were over winter, I really had no place to put my fiddle leaf fig. So it went into the bathroom where it didn't really get the care that it needed. This is what my fiddle leaf fig used to look like. Before initiating any task, deciding on your steps and the ultimate goal are a must. In this case, your purpose is to transform the weak, pencil thin and tilted fiddle leaf fig tree stem into a thick and strong trunk that can easily hold all its branches and maintain an efficient transport system. And here's what my fiddle leaf fig looks like now. As you can see, nothing. So I'm making this video to encourage anyone who is trying to figure out what to do with the fiddle leaf fig that might be a little leggy or a fiddle leaf fig that you want more branching on to do the big chop. I cut the tops off of my fiddle leaf fig branches here, here, and finally here about three weeks ago. And as you can see, the fiddle leaf fig is already beginning to push out new growth. Here's an example of what happened after I cut the top of this particular branch. I got a new growth point here, here, and then I also have a third one located here as well. What happens is the energy that the fiddle leaf fig would have otherwise used to push up growth vertically is instead being diverted along the nodes of the branch. Here's the second branch. As you can see, I have a growth point that is located here as well as here. And then I also have other growth points that exist all down the stem of, or excuse me, all down the branch of this particular fiddle leaf fig. And you can see I also have additional growth points on this third branch as well. So don't be afraid to chop up your fiddle leaf fig if it is looking a little leggy, or as you can see here, some of the leaves really aren't too pretty. The reason why these leaves aren't particularly pretty is because early this season, I stuck this particular tree outside and it was getting the harsh sunlight without being properly acclimated. So I got leaf scorch. I'm not too worried about this leaf scorch because of the fact that I chopped my fiddly fig up. So I'm going to get new branches that's really going to fill in all of this space and it's going to look absolutely beautiful. Before you do the big chop, there are a couple of things that I would recommend that you do beforehand just to make sure that you have the ultimate success. And I'm defining the ultimate success as getting multiple growth points on each branch. That way you can have a nice, beautiful, full tree. The first thing that you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that you do this chop during the growing season. Don't do this when your tree is dormant. You want to do it when it's actively trying to push out new growth. This will make sure that you have the most success possible and not really set your tree back as much as if you were to perform this big chop sometime in the winter time. Secondly, what you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that you give your tree a nice big bright spot before you perform this big chop. The reason why you want to do that is because if there because if your tree is in an area that gets a ton of sunlight, it is going to send a signal to your tree that it needs to put out new growth so it can take advantage of all that wonderful energy that is coming from the sun to feed your tree. Thirdly, what you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that you fertilize your plant every time you water after you perform the big chop. So what I'm doing is I'm actually watering this particular tree every single week. And the reason why I have to water it every single week is because it's outside. Because it's outside, it's actually creating more energy because it has more sunlight that it's able to absorb via photosynthesis. And every time I water, I'm actually fertilizing during that watering process. You'll hear different things about how often or how frequently you should fertilize as well as how much you should fertilize. A lot of times people will recommend doing a half dose of liquid fertilizer, but I actually do a full to a full and a half dose of liquid fertilizer when I'm fertilizing. So for instance, my fertilizer requires about a tablespoon of 
fertilizer per gallon of water. For one watering, I'll do the full one tablespoon per gallon of water. And then for the next watering, which will be a week later, I would do about a tablespoon and a half per gallon of water. If you like videos like this and want to see more videos about houseplant tips and tricks, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. It's totally free and would mean a lot. Thank you so much. Now back to the video. All right, so I've shown you some of the growth points that are already forming. So again, I have two growth points here. But then if I go down, you'll see that I have additional growth points on the branch as well, closer to the base. And again, this is just after a couple of weeks and ensuring that I fertilize my plant. A question might come up of, because the plant is outside and these new leaves are being pushed out, will I have to worry about things such as leaf burn? You're not gonna have to worry about your leaves really scorching like this leaf here, unfortunately, because your leaves are already gonna be acclimated to the intense rays of the sun. So when your leaves come out, your leaves are gonna be beautiful, green, and lush. Trust me, it will work. This is not the first time that I've done the big chop and your fiddle leaf fig will thank you for it. This fiddle leaf fig here is about four and a half feet. I'm hoping by the end of this season, it's gonna get about six feet tall. And on top of it being about six feet tall, I'm hoping to have beautiful branching that will really make this tree wonderful. Another advantage of putting the tree outside when you're performing this big chop is that you're also going to thicken up your trunk. A lot of times you're going to see people who have fiddly figs that are very leggy on the trunk or they are staked and that is not really beneficial to the health of the tree. People might say, oh, well, you just need to wait for the tree to mature, but that's not what causes the trunk to get thick. What causes your trunk to be thick is when it is agitated by wind or if it is agitated by any kind of movement. So this movement by the wind all throughout the day is actually what is thickening up this trunk here. Here is my second fiddle leaf fig that I performed the big chop on. I performed it on two of my fiddle leaf figs because I'm that confident in the fact that this will work. So this particular fiddle leaf fig had a different shape before I chopped. It was just growing vertical and it had two really spindly branches that were coming up up top and I didn't really care for the shape. This fiddle leaf fig is about five feet tall. When I performed the big chop, it created growth points located here as well as here 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 and then there are a few further down the tree trunk now obviously I'm gonna have to make some decisions about what I want the shape of this tree to look like and based on that will determine what branching or branches I decided to remove and what branches I decide to keep. So really what it comes down to is don't be afraid to chop up your tree. They're very resilient. People say that fiddle leaf figs are very finicky and that might be true but they will also reward you if you just go ahead and perform some kind of chop on them. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did please be sure to give it a thumbs up and I'll see you on the next video.